The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You will hear a student called Janet talking on the phone to the manager of a sports centre about a job. First you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hello, White Water Sports Centre. Hello, I wanted to inquire about a job at the centre. Right, I'll just put you through to the manager. Hello, Steve Thompson speaking. Hello, um, my name's Janet Willis. Um, I'm looking for a part-time job and I saw an ad saying that you have some vacancies. I was wondering what sort of people you're looking for. Well, at present we're looking for a part-time pool attendant. I don't know if you're interested in that. Oh, yes, definitely. OK. Well, have you done this sort of job before? Oh, yes. I've spent the last three summers working for a children's summer camps, so I did a lot of pool supervision. And I'm actually a sports student. Water sports is my special area. OK. Well, no need to ask if you can swim, then. No, I'm certainly not afraid of the water. So what does the job at the pool involve? You'd mainly be responsible for supervising the swimmers. We have to watch them all the time, obviously, in case of accidents. So you'd have regular shifts there. OK. Then, as well as that, you'd have to look after the equipment that's used by the beginners' classes. Right. And would I be involved in teaching them at all? I'd be quite interested in that. Well, they have their own instructor, so that's not really part of the job. The attendance job does involve taking regular water quality tests, but you wouldn't be involved in cleaning the pool or anything like that. OK. And the ad said you wanted someone just twice a week? Yes, that's right. Can I choose which days? Uh... <laughs> Well, if you'd rung up earlier, you could have done, but I'm afraid it's got to be Mondays and Wednesdays. We got someone for Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the weekends are already fully staffed. Is that going to be a problem for you? No, that should be all right. And the ad said it was evening work, right? Yeah, you start at 6, and the pool closes at 9.30, but you wouldn't get away until 10 by the time you've checked the lockers and changing rooms. Fine. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. And how much do you pay? The basic hourly rate is $15, but it would go up to 19 for someone with the right qualifications. Well, I've got life-saving certificates and first aid qualifications. Oh. Well, with that and your experience, you'd probably get the maximum rate then. Obviously, you'd have to come along for an interview if you're interested. Oh, it sounds just the job I'm looking for. Shall we fix a time for the interview now? OK. Uh, it's Janet, isn't it? Yep, yeah, Janet Willis. How about Friday morning, Janet? Around 11? Oh, sorry. I have lectures, but I could make the afternoon. 2pm? Fine. And can I just check on where you are? Is it Finden Avenue? No, it's 23 to 27 Farnden Avenue. That's F-A-R-N-D-O-N. It's off Eastgate. East Gate. Fine. I'll look forward to meeting you then. OK. So if you need to phone me before then, you can get through to me directly on 053210. Is there anything I need to bring along to the interview? Well, you do need to fill in an application form. I'll put one in the post for you so you can fill that in and bring it along. 
You don't want me to post it back to you? No. Just remember to bring it along with you. What about references? Should I bring any? Nah, but do have your certificates with you when you come. We need to see those. Great. Thanks very much then. I'll see you on Friday. Bye. Bye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Starting at the beginning, you can see the on-off switch just beneath the two lights. Having turned the machine on, these lights now become very important. When the light on the left has gone out, you can begin making coffee, as it means the water is now hot enough. Next to that is the water level light. If this is illuminated, it means the machine does not have enough water. It is essential that you turn the machine off and add more water the moment this light comes on, otherwise you could damage the heating element. Once you have checked that both the heater light and the water level light are off, make sure the filter holder, that's the part with the handle just under the control panel, is in place. Once you have your cups ready, it is time to press the coffee delivery switch that's the button just above the filter holder beside the boiler meter. Remember to take a quick look at the meter as it tells you the exact temperature of the water. On both the left and right hand side of the machine, on the same level as the filter holder, you can see the steam pipes used for heating milk. These steam taps need to be cleaned regularly to avoid blocking. And finally, if you do spill any coffee, don't worry. Just make sure that the drainage pipe at the bottom of the machine is leading into a sink or a suitable waste container. As with the steam taps, the drainage pipe needs regular cleaning. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. First and most importantly, I'll tell you where you should go from tomorrow for your lectures and classes. The Health Sciences Building is on the west side of the campus, opposite the library, beside the History Department. As you are probably aware, there are six modules to the course, which will take a year to complete. That's two modules each term. In the first module of this term, you will be looking at current laws with regard to health and safety in the workplace. Don't forget that as you progress through the course, you should be building your thesis. This will need to be completed by the end of the year. Coursework will also be credited to your final grade, but the most important part of the course is the thesis. Now the final thing I want to tell you, and again you should know this, is that there will be a number of guest speakers throughout your course. They will come from a number of different medical backgrounds, 
but they will all be giving you their views on the relevance of health sciences in their occupations. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear two students discussing a survey they have to write as an assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. How is your market research project going, George? Very well, actually, Anna. I've just got the results of the survey back, and so now I have to draw some conclusions from the information I've collected. That's good. I'm still writing my questionnaire. In fact, I'm starting to panic, as the project deadline is in two weeks and I don't seem to be making any progress at all. What is your topic? Forms of transportation in the city. What about you? I've been finding out people's attitudes to the amount of violence on television. That's interesting. What do your results show? Well, as I said, I haven't finished writing my conclusions yet, but it seems most people think there is a problem. Unfortunately, there is no real agreement on the action that needs to be taken. Nearly everyone surveyed said that there was too much violence on TV. A lot of people complained that American police serials and Chinese kung fu films are particularly violent. The main objection seems to be that, although a lot of people get shot, stabbed, decapitated and so on, films never show the consequences of this violence. Although people die and get horribly injured, nobody seems to suffer or live with the injuries. Any children watching might take the heroes of these programs as role models and copy their behaviour. So, what did most people suggest should be done? A lot of people were concerned about how these films affect children. They are particularly worried that children will try to behave like the stars. The survey shows that violent programs should be broadcast after 10pm, when most children are already in bed. There is also a significant minority of people who feel that violent films should be banned altogether. Well, how did people feel about the violence on news broadcasts? Most of the responses I have looked at have felt that violence on news broadcasts is more acceptable, as it's real. Although it's unpleasant, it is important to keep in touch with reality. Still many people thought that it would be better to restrict violent scenes to late viewing. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Your survey sounds very good. How many people filled it in? I gave out 120 and I got 70 back. That's a very high rate of return. Who did you give your questionnaires to? I gave a copy to every student in my hall of residence and a few to friends from other colleges. Don't you think that this will influence your results? How do you mean? 
the people in your hall of residence are all about the same age. They're all students and from similar backgrounds. Therefore, it is likely that they will have similar opinions. Your results represent student opinion, not public opinion. So, how are you going to do your research? Well, I'm going to interview my respondents in the shopping mall. What I'll do is ask people if they have five minutes to spare to answer a few questions. If they agree, I will ask them some multiple choice questions and tick off their answers on my sheet. Isn't it very difficult to ask meaningful questions using multiple choice? Yes, it is. The secret to writing a successful survey is to write simple multiple choice questions that target the information you're looking for. There, it's better to write a lot of short, specific questions than longer, general ones. So that's why it is taking you so long to write. Yeah, but I hope I'll be ready to start interviewing at the weekend. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk about memory in babies and young children. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. We are going to look today at some experiments that have been done on memory in babies and young children. Our memories, it's true to say, work very differently depending upon whether we are very old, very young, or somewhere in the middle. But when exactly do we start to remember things, and how much can we recall? One of the first questions that we might ask is: Do babies have any kind of episodic memory? Can they remember particular events? Obviously, we can't ask them. So, how do we find out? Well, one experiment that's been used has produced some interesting results. It's quite simple, and involves a baby in its cot, a colourful mobile, and a piece of string. It works like this: If you suspend the mobile above the cot and connect the baby's foot to it with the string, the mobile will move every time the baby kicks. Now you can allow time for the baby to learn what happens and enjoy the activity. Then you remove the mobile for a time and reintroduce it some time from one to fourteen days later. If you look at this table of results at the top two rows, you can see that what is observed shows that two-month-old babies can remember the trick for up to two days, and three-month-old babies for up to a fortnight. And although babies trained on one mobile will respond only if you use the familiar mobile, if you train them on a variety of colors and designs. They will happily respond to each one in turn. Now, looking at the third row on the table, you will see that when they learn to speak, babies as young as twenty-one months demonstrate an ability to remember events which happened several weeks earlier. And by the time they are two, some children's memories will stretch back over six months, 
though their recall will be random, with little distinction between key events and trivial ones. And very few of these memories, if any, will survive into later life. So, we can conclude from this that even very tiny babies are capable of grasping and remembering a concept. So, how is it that young infants can suddenly remember for a considerably longer period of time? Well, one theory accounting for all of this, and this relates to the next question we might ask, is that memory develops with language. Very young children with limited vocabularies are not good at organising their thoughts. Though they may be capable of storing memories, do they have the ability to retrieve them? One expert has suggested an analogy with books on a library shelf. With infants, he says, it's as if early books are hard to find because they were acquired before the cataloguing system was developed. But even older children forget far more quickly than adults do. In another experiment, several six-year-olds, nine-year-olds and adults were shown a staged incident. In other words, they all watched what they thought was a natural sequence of events. The incident went like this. A lecture, which they were listening to, was suddenly interrupted by something accidentally overturning. In this case, it was a slide projector. To add a third stage, and make the recall more demanding, this accident was then followed by an argument. In a memory test the following day, the adults and the nine-year-olds scored an average 70%, and the six-year-olds did only slightly worse. In a retest five months later, the pattern was very different. The adults' memory recall hadn't changed, but the nine-year-olds had slipped to less than 60%, and the six-year-olds could manage little better than 40% recall. In similar experiments with numbers, digit span is showed to vary. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.